This speedrun demo covers how to schedule Lambda function executions from your Unity game at the second level precision. This is helpful if you're creating a strategy game, for example, that has actions that takes time to complete, like building a new barracks, upgrading a base, or researching the next weapon upgrade. The idea here is that your game initiates an action with a time to completion or build time before it is ready. It's probably something that you want executed fairly accurately so your players have a good user experience. To accomplish this, we'll use AWS to create a step function state machine that accepts a future execution time. Then once that time has passed, we configure it to immediately execute a Lambda function to perform whatever post build actions or cleanup that needs to be done for your game, like updating or saving some data to your Dynamo tables or database. To get started, head over to the Lambda section, create a new function, and select Author from Scratch. Give it a name and hit Create Function. I created an example Lambda function that handles creating a step function execution and also processing the post wait time actions. You can also do these in two separate functions, it was just easier for the demo to put them in one. Ok, now let's do a quick code review. We pass in a JSON object that contains the build type we want to kick off. I added a source header with the value of Unity as part of the request so we know this request came from Unity and not from any other source. I do this because I wanted to use the same Lambda function for both starting the step function and also receiving the output once it's complete. So let's go into the start step function execution method. Here I call determine build time to get the build time needed for this object type. You can see that if it's temple, return a build time of 5 minutes. Then we build the input JSON object and include the wait until time, which is now plus whatever the wait time is along with our build ID. You can pass whatever values you want as an input to the step function. Then we kick off the step function's execution and return a successful response to Unity that indicates we successfully started this step function execution. Once the wait until time has passed, our step function will call back to this function and hits the onStepFunctionComplete method. Now this is where you want to perform your post build cleanup. Any state changes you need to save to DynamoDB or whatever database you're using, do that here. Then the function completes and that's pretty much it. I want to point out that this doesn't actually return the Unity client when it completes the step function. In order to do something like that, you'll need to set up an SNS topic to send a push notification, or maybe if the client has an active WebSocket connection, just send back a message with whatever data the client or clients need. Ok, over in the state machine console, create a standard step function. On the design workflow, select the flows tab. Drag a wait state to the flowchart. Then in the details panel select, wait until a specific date and time. Then under the date and time dropdown, select get timestamp from state input. Using the get timestamp from state input allows us to pass in a JSON object with the wait until parameter that the wait element uses to know when to stop waiting. Then in here you're going to add a dollar sign dot wait until and whatever other parameters that you need to pass. This is how the state machine knows which inputs you want it to recognize. Once it hits the wait until time, it will move to the next step, which in our case is executing a lambda function. Back under the actions tab, drag over a lambda invoke function. Select the lambda element and select your lambda function we just created. Hit next. Hit next again. Name your state machine, leave create new role selected, then hit create state machine. Next we create an API gateway endpoint that triggers the lambda function created earlier, which then kicks off the step function execution. This API endpoint will be called from our Unity client whenever the player kicks off an action with a build time. Create a new REST API and hit build. Give it a name and hit create. Then under the Actions dropdown, select Create Method, then select Post and save it. Make sure to select the Lambda Proxy Integration checkbox, as this will allow all the request information to be passed back to the Lambda function. And select our Lambda function created above, and then hit Save. Then back under the Actions dropdown, select Deploy API. Select New Stage and give it a name, hit Deploy. 
At this point, you have an active API gateway with a URL that we can invoke from our Unity client. So we need to create a policy that gives our Lambda function permissions to run the state machine. Back over in our Lambda function, select the Configuration tab, then select the role name to open it in the IAM console. Select Attach Policies, then hit Create Policy. For Service, select Step Function. Under Action, select Write, then tick the Start Execution checkbox. Then select Resources and hit Add ARN. Here we'll input our region and the state machine name we created earlier. Hit Add. Hit Next until the review screen, then input a name and description, then hit Create Policy. Back over in the Attach Permissions view, hit Refresh and input the name of the policy you just created. Select it and hit Attach Policy. Now your Lambda role will include permissions that allows it to execute our state machine. Okay, here's the demo project. The game controller and API manager are attached to this game object. Our game controller basically runs the game, but the main functionality is spread over Buildable Object Manager and API Manager. The game controller kicks off the object build when the build button is pressed. The build object function in Buildable Object Manager creates the request body with the type of build we want to execute, then makes a call to the API Manager. Don't forget to add your API Gateway endpoint here. For this project, we use the Unity web request to call to the endpoint and add our source header. The response back will tell us if the step function was kicked off successfully. After our request completes, I just perform a mock build time, then call to the end build function to clean up our client side part of the build. The temple script only manages the visual parts of the build process. In practice, you'll just show your build animation until the end build function was hit. Then perform your post build wrap up here. Like I mentioned earlier, you can send out a SNS push notification or send an update over an active WebSocket connection to indicate the end of the build. You have several options, but that is for you to decide based on your project's requirements. So use mBuild to wrap up the build process on the client. Let's run a quick demo. Hit the Build Temple button. This kicks off the client side animation and also makes a call to our API gateway endpoint that runs our Lambda function that starts the state machine. You can see in our logs the call was successful at starting the state machine. Now let's take a look at the state machine progress. You can see in the console that it is actively running. You can also see that the wait time is currently running with a stop time of one minute after it started. As soon as that one minute passes, it calls back to our Lambda function and completes the process for building our temple. Note the inputs that are passed to the Lambda function. You can configure this to pass in whatever you'd like. And now that it's complete, our end time was exactly one minute, give or take a few milliseconds. So just to wrap up, the reason why Lambda is a good choice is that you only pay for the time that it executes, which will be free for most accounts up to a certain usage amount. And it's much cheaper than running an EC2 instance for the scheduling. Your game can tackle the end build notifications in a few ways, which again, depends on how you've set up your networking. You can also chain additional actions to the state machine that can be called simultaneously with the Lambda function if that's what your project needs. You can also send out a push notification using SNS or send a message using SQS. You have a few options. And just a final note, this demo doesn't address any security or authorization, but you can lock down the API gateway with an authorizer. Thanks for watching.